Kia ora koutou, uh, ko Dale Sherman got a nei tōku ingoa, nō Ngāpui Whakatohe me Te Arawa Oku Iwi. I'm the Health Advice Manager for Arthritis New Zealand and it gives me great pleasure to welcome our guest today. Kia ora and we would like to welcome Jason Tuhui and I'll let him introduce himself. Kia ora. Kia ora. Te nā koe o tia te nā tātou. Uh, ko Jason Pumutunga Tuhui tō koe moa. Uri tēnei noro tō hauraki. Uh, Ana no ngā pui no, no te aroa no hiru ngā tipiki au. Kia ora. Uh, ko ko honunga uh, i te taro te ka Māui i Manaia uh, i reira o ku uh, how long have you been working at Papakura so I've been here at Papakura Marae for the last five months um, and, and drawn here uh, because of the mahi that they do here uh, for our whanau and Papakura but also the leaders that they have here particularly in, in Māori Health with uh, Mātiri Harwood so um, she was one of my um, tutors coming through the University of um, Auckland uh, so that was the reason why I wanted to come to this specific uh, place to work closer to our people um, but I also, before I came here, I worked in Tokoroa. Oh. So I was there for four years yes. as a GP, uh, working there as I, once I had finished my uh, GP training in 2016. So, uh, nice. uh, yeah, I, I really enjoyed being here and, and being a part of the whanau and helping to uplift mm. uh, people who are, who are here in Papakura. And uplift the health for all our Māori people, but not just Māori, you know? Te ao katoa, because you don't just service Māori here, do you? No, no, we service everybody here. Yeah. And um, because people deserve to have the right health outcomes, eh? and they deserve equity, and yeah. that's the kaupapa um, that's here at the marae. That's what drives the marae in terms of the health services, in terms of the clinic where we are, but that's just one part of the health. The biggest system. The biggest, yeah. We have other health services here at the Marae. Um, I think there's 44 other health services here for our whanau. But we also have uh, the Marae itself for, for wānanga, um, for periods where people can come together and just be people. Yeah. And all the other social services in the wrap round, education, employment, it's great opportunities. It is. It is. Well, I know, definitely, yes. Absolutely. So we brought you here today to actually have a corridor with you and if you could tell us your perspectives as a Māori GP about gout arthritis. So from my perspective as a, as a Māori GP, so gout arthritis is a form of inflammatory arthritis um, and it's and it's an arthritis. When we think about the actual um, gout and the uric acid and the crystal itself, you can get a better understanding of why it causes inflammation because the crystal itself is it has two ends that are pointy or sharp and as they as it sort of travels around in the blood um, it can go into a joint like say for instance the one that we know the most which is into the foot yeah. into yeah. the big toe yeah. which is what we call <laughs> the first metatarsal yeah. and it deposits there and the symptoms um, that come with that, with that uh, inflammation, is you get heat, you get redness, you get swelling, but you also get a lot of pain. Pain, hey, it's that pain, eh? No? Yeah. That's that's what we hear constantly. Yeah, and yeah. so when I try to explain uh, what um, gout is, I use those uh, principles so that I find and understand in their own minds what gout oh, is, yes. because a lot of the time. A lot of our whānau with any condition, they don't, they're not told or they're not, it's not explained to them how that happens mm. and once they have a clear understanding then they, then they know what to expect and I guess how we can manage it because Absolutely. that's what it needs to be that's managed. 
And so is gout arthritis something that's just caused from the food you eat or what you drink? So the things that we know now with gout specifically is that there is what we call a genetic predisposition. And that means that um, our bodies, our tinana, in particular an area around the kidneys, we don't actually, is Māori, but also specific, we don't excrete uh, uric acid, the actual crystal out. And so uh, we do find that there are higher rates of gout in Māori as well as in Pacific peoples because of that. So it doesn't necessarily come down to just the food you eat, but also there is that part there that predisposes you to developing gout. But we also know that it travels also in families. Uh, There are families who have gout and those are things that they've been trying to manage for a long time without actually managing it how it should be managed. Yeah. That's exactly it. And I think, leading on to our next question, mm. is if someone gets gout, what's what's the best thing for them to do? So the, the first thing that um, Fano should do is come in to see somebody like me, a general practitioner, or even our, um, because a lot of our clinics now we have no subscribers um, who also understand this, but also we're, we're lucky here at, um, at Papakura Marae that we've got a, uh, a clinical pharmacist who who's done a lot of mahi, Leanne Takaru, I'm yeah. sure you've heard of her, yes, absolutely. and gout. And um, so it's not just now, I suppose, the general practitioner, but we have health professionals out there who, who are able to manage these um, just as well. So coming in and seeing us, one of us, is a, is a great thing to do. It's yeah. the best thing to do, really. And so it's important for whānau, if they get gout, to get on a gout action plan, so a treatment plan? Yeah, so it's not just go and see the chief or somebody, mm. our professional, and get a prescription for the usual things, which is like diclathinac. Yes. Um, or that sort of triangle pill. Yeah. That's the, that's the, the yeah. medication. So we also know with that particular medication that it's actually quite bad for the kidneys, mm. especially if you have kidney problems. Yes. Yeah. And it's also been shown to um, increase the risk of heart disease and stroke. So the, so the action plan is to look at alternatives um, to help manage it, like naproxen or like prednisone to settle down the acute attack when it happens. But like you also said as well, a medication to help prevent it. Mm. Because we used to think you need to have like three attacks in a year, then yeah. go on to a medication like allopurinol. Yeah. But now we're actually thinking it's probably best if we look at starting it as soon as possible to get the ongoing, or to get prevention, benefits. yeah, yeah. You know, get the ongoing benefits and ongoing prevention of gout. Um, so, as part of the next phase of the treatment, if people go to their GPs but they don't give them the option to go on to allopurinol, how would they start those conversations with their GP? Yeah, so sometimes, so I... Um, sort of frame that as it's good to have support with you. So if you feel like you can have, if you want you know, people to come with you, then you should bring somebody you know, to support you um, and actually raising those questions because you have a right uh, mm. to actually raise that. And if you feel like you've just been given the same medication, the same diclofenac, the same triangle, yeah. you know, every time that you come in, we all know now that that's not the right pathway and so it's about understanding that you know there is another option like allopurinol, mm. um, and that that is there, and that we do use that, and we need to get it more out there that that's a medication that can actually help to prevent gout you know, altogether. So that you actually don't have to come in and see me as yeah. regularly yeah. as you may do when you get the when you get, when exactly. you get the gout attack. So Fano can be very helpful, but also understanding. Um, out and understanding that there are other options for oh, medication is for the for the for the person for the patient because the other thing is gut's not just a thing that happens with males it also happens with females, females as well exactly, exactly. You know? exactly. and it's not just something that happens in older and the older group you know the youngest that i've seen with gut is 18 and you can imagine how that would impact absolutely impact on everything or aspects of their life yeah um yeah so 
So that's yeah, huge. It is huge. Mm. What are some of the consequences if people don't get onto a treatment plan yeah. for gout arthritis? So because of the inflammation that happens, like if it's not controlled or settled down, that can cause some changes in the actual bone. Um, that's, um, so you can get um, where the bone starts to work or resorb or, or be broken away. But the other thing is that because of the ongoing inflammation, you get lots of swelling around the area, and that's what these things are called, like gouty tophi, which is which is what you hear about in things. But that's so that's a, those are the things that can happen with the gout. But it's also what happens like in everyday life. So find they have to take time off work because they one they can't work yeah. because they can't walk around because they can't you know wear their footwear mm. or whatever um, type of mahi that they do. Um, but also now we're looking at the long-term consequences um, of gout, and there's been recent evidence that's come out to show that it's a, uh, because it's an inflammatory process that happens, it can increase uh, the risk of what we call cardiovascular disease, so heart attack heart. and yeah. stroke. You know? So there's so many facets, where it, or so many areas in which it has an impact, not just on the person, um, in terms of the physical symptoms, but on the uh, on how they interact with the whānau, how they interact with their, their workspace, yeah, the mahi, whānau, yeah. huge the, consequences for yeah, a small, a small thing. thing but much. it's pretty. It's had such a huge impact, though. It does, yeah. Mm. And then like, a lot of us, we all know somebody who's you know, unfortunately, had, yeah. yes, yeah. And, and you know, in my own whānau, I have. Uh, whānau members who have suffered from gout and you know it's, uh, I give them the education I talk to them about it talk to them about seeing their GP but sometimes um, you know some of their previous experiences that they've had yeah. have not been good not good eh no see my husband was the same he had been on it and I'd been talking to him about alipirinol alipirinol but his doctor was like, oh no, you haven't had three attacks, it's all good. But actually, his attacks kept getting worse, and mm. then he kept missing major events, mm. you know, and it affected our whānau. Mm. And it was our daughter going to sit, watch her netball, which she's really good at. So it's those other consequences yeah. that actually impact, and it was just because he wasn't on a treatment plan. Exactly. It was just fixing the pain. Yeah. So, not yeah. preventing not preventing not preventing the actual issue. Yeah. But also not, not taking into account the wider context on which it has an impact. Exactly. And yeah. now that he is on a treatment plan, you know, he's been free of any attacks That's for right. the last six months. You know, he is just singing praises <laughs> on the aloperinol. He is yeah. like the new aloperinol little whiz kid because <laughs> he's not suffering anymore. Yeah. And he can still eat things. Yeah. That's and it. it's, he's not getting gout attacks. So yeah. that's kind of huge in itself. Yeah, not just for him, but you. Oh, for, for us whānau. as a whānau, yeah. absolutely. And that, those are the same stories that I hear as well. Yeah. When the, when patients have been finally put on to oh, out of pure Exactly, and finally. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So is there any final um, things that you would like yeah. the community okay. to know? In regards to gout arthritis, yeah, I think you know it's a it's a very important issue that you know can sometimes there can be a lot of fakama. Oh, I don't. A lot, lot of I um, shame, I suppose, in, in saying that you know, I've got gout. Well, I know somebody who mm. has gout, you know, and I think that's it's about elevating it through the public consciousness to say this is not an actual. You don't have to be fakama about gout. Yeah. There is a treatment that we can use one to, to, to get the acute attack under control. Uh, there's also something that we can use to prevent it from happening. The other part of the prevention is that it needs to be monitored. Yes. So we can't just give you one med because it starts off at say 100 milligrams. That's the normal sort of starting dose. Um, and that can be adjusted depending on what the kidney function of the patient is, what our whānau members are, but it can actually go up if the, um, if gout's not under control. The way that we ma manage that is, or measure that is through a blood test. So okay. then we check the blood test every three months 
to make sure that we get the uric acid levels down enough. Because we know if we can get it below 0.36, we've got the gout, there's a higher chance of the gout being under control. Oh, brilliant. The other part is with the medication now, the Purinol, like I said, it can go up um, to sometimes 600 milligrams to get it under control. If there is, if we're not getting it under control, there is another option. There's one called for Boxerstat. Uh, which is another medication that can be used. And if that all fails, then we can actually get a rheumatologist involved, which is a specialist who looks at uh, inflammatory arthritis or any forms of arthritis. So there is a pathway. It just doesn't sort of stop. One, if we don't find that we get it under control, we need to keep going until we can get it under control. Under control. So that Fano can so that Fano can do what they need to do, not just for themselves, but also be active in their own Fano, active in their communities, active within their hapu, within their iwi, within you know all the facets of Everything. orana. With yeah, I yeah. Oh, this has been really interesting, and um, thank you for explaining things. Na mihi nunu e ki aku e ho ki te haramai ki te tautoko te kaupapa whakaherehere um, mō te haora, mō nā Māori, nā tātou kato. Ja, e mihi ana, e mihi ana ki te uh, nā runga noi te whakaaro uh, i te mutu nei ho kei, at, kei a tangata uh, tōnā ke mana mutu hake, tōnā ke rangatira tanga ko mātou, nō ki oku nei whakaaro ko mātou pera rawa i iau uh, i ngā tākota ki te Tuku i e tehi māramatanga, i e tehi mātauranga ki te tangata kia ora ai. Ia, kia ora ai hoki, te whānau, te hapu, te ingi. Hei oranga mo tata katoa ni. Hei oranga. Mo re re mihi ana, kia koutia, kia koutou katoa. Kia ora. Kia ora.